we found something extraordinary. Extraordinary and disturbing, that is. You recall what you said in New Delhi about how polar melting might disrupt the North Atlantic current? Yes. Well, I think it's happening. What do you mean? Well, the day after tomorrow was a, a quite a nice Hollywood disaster movie, which of course uh, doesn't necessarily follow the laws of physics, but it follows the laws of Hollywood drama. The day after tomorrow, the film, the premise uh, is based on science, but it was greatly overblown and frustrated a lot of uh, climatologists. But it had this basic theme that uh, a weakening of the Atlantic Ocean circulation could have major consequences. What about the North Atlantic current? What about it? The current depends upon a delicate balance of salt and fresh water. We all know that. Yes, but no one has taken into account how much fresh water has been dumped into the ocean because of melting polar ice. I think we've hit a critical desalinization point. The observational data confirms something that has been feared for a long time, namely that a slowdown of the Atlantic Ocean's overturning circulation has now really started in earnest. There is this enigmatic uh, patch of uh, ocean in the North Atlantic, just south of Greenland. And if you look at the, the pattern of temperature uh, during 2014, uh, the globe was uh, warmer than it's ever been on average. It was unusually warm over most of its surface, but there was this small patch where uh, the surface of the ocean was actually relatively cool. The last three months this winter was the warmest on record globally, but it set a new all-time cold record in the subpolar North Atlantic. So there it's the coldest uh, since the year 1880 when the records began. The um, global conveyor belts of of uh, heat that goes through the ocean, the thermohaline circulation has been called the Achilles heel of the climate system. So you have warm water in the tropics going north into the Arctic, uh, sea ice formation, evaporation, um, leaving salty water to, to, to drain down to the bottom of the ocean basins. And this has been called the a thermohaline circulation, haline for salt, and, and that, that, that descending uh, dense uh, salty water then um, spreads out over the, the ocean uh, basins uh, globally and, and is, is the part of this so-called uh, global conveyor belt that exchanges uh, heat and, 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 and mass in the ocean. That circulation pattern uh, appears to be slowing down uh, substantially. We have paleoclimatic proxy data now that go back to the year 900 AD, over a thousand years, and they show that the weakening of the circulation that we find during the 20th century is unique over the last millennium at least. Uh, light uh, fresh water uh, flooding the North Atlantic, it, it wasn't clear really the source of it. It turns out that Greenland melting explains about two-thirds of the freshening in, in the North Atlantic. That, that freshwater doesn't um, get flushed out very easy, so it, it lingers on the top. We're not going to see uh, massive tornado outbreaks that destroy uh, Los Angeles. Look over there behind me, that's a, a tornado! Yes, a twister in Los Angeles! It's one of many tornadoes that are destroying our city! There's another one! Or three huge hurricane-like wind patterns covering the entire north, uh, northern hemisphere. This is 48 hours out. Or a return to ice age conditions over the northern half of the U.S. in a matter of days. Evacuate everyone south of that line. What about the people in the north? I'm afraid it's too late for them. Um, that's all the the stuff of Hollywood, and it's a caricature of what the actual science has to say. There's really no chance of, of the return to very cold conditions simply because the oceans have taken up so much heat. You, you may have some regional cooling in the, in the North Atlantic, but overall it's a warming globe. If 
we were to see a total collapse of that ocean circulation pattern over the course of a decade or two or even three decades, it would change these ocean circulation patterns. It could influence the food chain in a way that would uh, negatively impact fish populations that we rely upon, that other living things uh, rely upon. So it's, a, it's another example of a potential nasty surprise that could loom in the greenhouse. Maybe you should stick to science and leave policy to us. Well, we tried that approach. You didn't want to hear about the science when it could have made a difference.